Would you like to play a game? The caller is in the house. Be afraid. <laughs> Be very afraid. Now stay on the line. Good energy. Scream at the top of your mouth, not too like not at your lungs. Just ah. ah! Now let me hear you say oh. 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 And let me hear you say a a a a. Okay, A, A. Let me hear you say, oh, oh. Oh, oh. A, A. A, A. Oh, oh. Oh, oh. A, A. A, A. Now smack that ass like a drum. Now smack that ass like a drum. Now rub your nipples till you come. Now rub your nipples till you come. Kelly's like, ooh, ooh. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Stay on the Line, a horror genre podcast hosted and created by me, Tara Card. And every week we talk about something horror genre related. Usually on Thursdays, we are back with a book review, Woo-hoo! and we're we we're, we're welcome with uh, Kelly Green Ivy, Langley Reynolds, and Tara Carl. I meant oh. to put the and in between y'all because uh, your full cool name isn't Kelly Green Ivy. No, it's just Langley Kelly Reynolds. Green. Are you related any relation to Ryan? No, Reynolds. I'm sorry, I wish. Oh. Burt Reynolds. Burt Reynolds. No, the foil. <laughs> The foil? I, yeah, I wish that too. Yeah. Wait, what movie was really it? The, the, the foil? foil? Oh. <laughs> I need to look up a picture. Uh, he's white. Oh no, Burt Reynolds. Um, he's yeah, really he's hairy. Got a I'm thinking of Burt Goner. Like, he's got like super a big hairy, and he was one of the too. sexy yeah. men of the Oh, he's world. dead. Oh yeah, is he's he? dead. Yeah. No, is he? He is. Remember, like, is right he? before he died. I love her. Right before he died, he, like, did an interview where he said Sally Field was the one that got away, and then Sally Field was like, yeah, duh. And then he died. And I was like, oof. Very At least he got it out. Yeah. Interesting. Um. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. That was very tea. interesting. It was some tea. Um, we're here to do a book review. What did we read? What moves... Oh, you don't have that. I don't have my jacket. It's on the <laughs> side. Pretty interesting. Yeah, I like the the hardcover thing. Mm-hmm. I also like the rabbit in the inside. It mm-hmm. is what moves the dead. This kind of looks like the poster to House, 1977 Japanese house. What are you talking, talking, talking about? about? So yeah, we read What Moves the Dead by Tink... Uh, Tink... <laughs> Tink. Tink Kinker. Uh, T. Kingfisher, which is a pseudonym. Their name is like Ursula something. Mm-hmm. I don't like... Well, I can't say I don't like pseudonyms. Who's Tara Card? Who's <laughs> Kelly Green Who's Well, Kelly I feel like some people do do pseudonyms because like they of weird... Yeah. Well, or women. I can't say that because... <laughs> Hypocrite. I am a lady, so I'm going to I shut up. When people say... <laughs> Yeah, this was a book. How would you feel? I mean, you you read this in a in a week. Non spoiler feelings right I now before we get into it. In a day. It was two days. I really liked it actually. I wasn't sure what to think going into it, and I felt like it surprised me around every corner. Mm-hmm. I stayed engaged the whole time. That's how I got through it so fast. I really loved it. I, I think she's a great author. Me too. I really liked it. I'm definitely down to read other things by her. Mm-hmm. Um, I. I mean, I really did enjoy it. Like, I would put it on a list of one of my favorite reads. Same. Mm-hmm. I liked it. Oh, yeah. I like how it's, it literally says, cause we, uh, you and I read the author's note, mm-hmm. where she's like, yeah, I literally got this from an Edgar Allan Poe story. It literally is on the back of this book. It says a gripping and atmospheric reimagining of Edgar Allan Poe's The Fall of the House of the Usher from Hugo. So, yeah. I didn't think of that until I read the author's note. Wow, I didn't even read the back of the fucking book. I like this book. It's probably one of my favorites now next to Annihilation, which is very uh, interesting because both deal with spores mm-hmm. and things like that. I just said, and I things like that. Uh, we have read Annihilation for the podcast, so if you want to read that one too, you can read that and go yeah. listen to our review. Definitely. Um, yeah. I'm there. Also, Kelly and I... Maybe we'll talk about this oh, at a different nothing time. But black and teeth. Nothing but black and teeth by a USA Today bestseller. Girl, <laughs> uh, is it by Cassandra Call, which you also recommended a book from them? Where yes. the mysterious book that I don't know where it is now. You just lost it. Um, I <laughs> well, that's the sound of the police. Um, <laughs> I, I have to find out where it is. Not my favorite. 
Not yeah. my favorite. May, may, we'll talk about that in a yeah. different thing. But I think it was only like $10. I'm fine with that. I'm building up my book collection. Mm-hmm. I think it's um, looking good. I'm going to buy the hardback. This inspires me to read more. Uh, we also, I think, do we want to do this for our next one? Yeah, I'm, I'm assuming so, well, that. Yeah. I'm I'm assuming that you you want to come back even though you haven't you've been here for five minutes. We'll um, Carmia, Car- I'm I Car- say that because oh, I'm from Spain. Carmia, Car- Car- how do you guys say it if you weren't me? Carmia, Carmia. Car- you would say that. Yeah. I know that. You wouldn't say Carmilla. No. Is that how they say it? Carmilla? Double L's. Carmia yeah, by Joseph Sher- Sheridan Le mm. Um edited by Carmen Maria. <laughs> Um, Machado. I am assuming you told me this is kind of LGBTQ. Have you read it yet? Supposedly, no, LGBTQ. I have not. I was reading a bit of Dracula, and they were talking about just the history of vampires, and that they're obviously in horror and in vampires specifically. It comes into queerness comes into play, mm-hmm. and so I was recommended that as like a another queer represent mm-hmm. representation of vampirism. Yeah. Well, a lot of horror creatures. Like Frankenstein, Creature of the Black Lagoon, have a lot Tarot of... card, even. Mm. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, they have a, a lot of queer, not representation in them, but they have a lot of, like, a lot of queer people can find themselves relating to them. Someone mm-hmm. who's the outcast, who's been alienated, that's a little bit different. But yeah. anyways, we're going to probably read this next for the podcast, so if you want to do that, just um, stay tuned. And then I also got the the dead silence. I'm one. excited this about this, This is too. big. This is she big. Thick. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm gonna have to once I go through this. It's in- intimidating. I haven't read a big book in a very long time. I am seeing some on your shelf, so I haven't read them yet. Oh. I bought them. My heart is a chainsaw. Yeah. yeah. I haven't I haven't read it yet. I need to do that. That's my done pile up there for the most part. My done oh, my okay, done books. Which is not a lot, but like I'm Definitely glad that I have a done pile. Yeah, that's yeah. impressive. Not the movies. Don't look at the I movies. I did look at that. Yeah. I was like, I was that's like your they have a scream book? Pile? I was so excited to read Scream. <laughs> scream 1, 2, and 3 <laughs> trilogy set. Good book. Okay, yeah, we're going to talk that. about this book. Are y'all excited? I yes. Am. Oh my God, this is just going to be a fun thing. Fun guy. Funny. Fun guy. Fun them. Aww. Fun ba. Yeah. Ba. Okay. Fun ba. Ka, mm-hmm. if they're older, because mm-hmm. this, this book talks about pronouns. Yeah. Because it is true that there are different cultures that have a lot of different pronouns other than she, her, they, them, he, him. Yeah. And um, you would never call a kid a ka because they'll say you're a pervert. Or just use any other pronouns other than child pronouns. Which is va. Mm-hmm. 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 So, who wants to give us a non-spoiler synopsis of the book? If, like, you're trying to intrigue someone who is listening, like, hey, maybe you should pick up the book. All right. So, basically... Quick. Oh. Non-spoiler synopsis. Okay. All right. So, basically, there's this guy uh, named Easton, and he gets a letter from a friend of his, Madeline. Madeline. They've been friends since they were kids. And um, she thinks her, her brother thinks that she is dying. So he's like, let me go check on my girl. Uh, he gets there and they both look absolutely terrible. Uh, their house is poor. Everything is decrepit. 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 Anyway, everything looks weird. Meanwhile, he's also met this lady who was chilling by the water. And um, there were some stinky mushrooms. So non-spoiler um, synopsis. Yeah, so you don't have not, to describe everything. I know, but I'm just saying that's Like, what is the important. premise of the, the book? Okay, well, he... Fine. Okay, so... The <laughs> you're, like, <laughs> you're rehashing literally the first chapter? Okay, okay, okay. So, basically, yeah, they, they're super sick. There's some other people at the house. He's trying to figure out why are they so sick. He's just kind of chilling. And then things get super crazy. And why are they sick? Does it have something to do with his new friend? He not? Does she know something? I don't know. There you go. Anything you need to add to that? Um, no. No, Slay I feel queen. like it's about them trying to comfort their friends that yeah. they appear to be dying. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Which, that's something I want to talk about a little bit later, because mm-hmm. they appear to be dying. So, what is that about? Um, mm-hmm. So, right here, we're giving you a... Uh, that was hefty. A hefty. spoiler... Oh, that smells bad. Oh, no. <laughs> Uh, we're giving you a spoiler warning. Everyone say spoiler warning. Spoiler, spoiler warning. warning. So we're about to spoil this book. We're not going to go play by play. Um, we're just going to talk about some questions I have. And y'all can ask me questions too. We have some characters in this book. Mm-hmm. We have Alex Easton, Mrs. Potter, 
Angus, I keep saying anus. Oh. Roderick Usher, Madeline Usher, and Denton are kind of like our lead people. Mm -hmm. And then there's Alice. So out of those characters, like, who is, like, your favorite character Mrs. out of that? Potter. I really love Mrs. Potter. I love Mrs. Potter. She, she probably stood... didn't have that many lines, but I kind of fucked with her. I yeah. do. I appreciate her. She stood her boundaries. Mm -hmm. She clearly stated them. So real quick, if someone's not wanting to read this, but they want to know, mm -hmm. who is Mrs. Potter? So Mrs. Potter, they introduced Harry! Her. Oh, <laughs> maybe. She's British. And um, it. <laughs> <laughs> she, uh, they Easton runs up on her in the woods, and she is a... He's a soldier, by the way. Right. Yeah. A soldier. Oh, yeah. Um, just runs up on this lady. Well, of course, back. Kind of yeah, I mean, yeah. Right um, she's an illustrator, and she's working on the different fungus and mushroom species in the area because she wants to stake her claim. It's 1890, so women aren't really... Taken seriously. Yeah, like so the only job she did have was as an illustrator, and she's trying to break into the scientific world. That's which, cool. I, I mean, like that. I love the hustle. I respect it. Mm -hmm. And then she drops the little hint that her niece is Beatrix Potter, and I just was so excited. Yeah. Well, who's that? Um, oh, she's illustrator for... She's the Velveteen? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Velveteen She's rabbit. the real-life illustrator of the Velveteen Rabbit and was a mycologist. What is that? Oh, it's a book. It's a children's it's like series. Oh, okay. Yes. I didn't know who it's that white well. lady oh, was. I think it's, what is his name? Peter Rabbit? No? Nicki Minaj. Oh. No, Peter Rabbit's different, oh. I think. Okay, okay, so she's a... She's an illustrator. So that's why they make a joke that's like your tenth in line to the... Right. Yeah. So she's, she's just... I mean, she's just cool, man. I love her. Mm -hmm. I have to respect a woman scientist in the field. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And she's just like she knows a lot of things. She's here to help. Mm -hmm. Like she's she's a cool lady. She's not made to seem dumb in no. any aspect. She's not oh, made no. to seem she's like hysterical in any aspect, mm. which I really like. I think that has to do with the writing of T. Kingfisher. Is like you know we had read some books in the past. <clears throat> um, yeah. What was it? The Final Girls the by Final Riley Girl. Sager were like they make these women just seem like the big milky mommies oh, yeah. was lactate and i told and you this you don't like have built milky mommies then big milky <laughs> what did you just say bulk. Big. you said milk. bulk milky bulk mommies milky mamas. <laughs> mamas. <laughs> bulk milky mamas but if you don't have the you know big boobies then you're just fat and ugly yeah you're just yeah. fat and ugly. which okay. i don't I don't remember exactly what she looked like in this. Um, maybe she was a little bit older, was she? Yes, she was supposed to be older, and I feel like it was kind of nondescript. Like, I mm -hmm. think a lot of her writing was not necessarily focused on a lot of physical traits to me. Yeah. Except, for, like, the except for the sickly people. people. Yes, I extremely think, I think that's there. what mattered. Yeah. Truly, yes. um, Well, we know that, um, what's his name, Easton is, like, short and mm -hmm. compact. Uh, and I so, really liked Easton. Yeah, I Easton I liked him too. Easton's I thought they chill. were really interesting as a character. Mm -hmm. And then again, going back to it being 1890, technically Easton is their gender identity as soldier, mm -hmm. uh, essentially, mm -hmm. but they're... I forgot, like, I never really assumed Easton as a male kind mm -hmm. of thing, like, reading this. I yeah, it, they use, like... More non-binary. Yeah, they have of... more binary... Binary. <laughs> they have more non-binary pronouns in this, which they explain, like, con, mm -hmm. con, mm -hmm. for, like, soldiers. And, I mean, Alex Easton, that can be interpreted as... That's true. That is that... Yeah. In our society, that could be either, quote-unquote, a male or a female, quote-unquote, mm -hmm. name. But they did talk about them no longer binding, and so I was like, oh, okay. So they yeah. did bind their breasts, and it was something that was brought up. And they talked about how Miss Potter, when they ran into them, was kind of giving them the once-over of, like, okay, who are you? Yeah. And the same thing with the American Denton yeah. later on. But they weren't disregarded because of that. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that And was... we did go into the history of how, like, women did join the war in Galatia, which mm -hmm. gave... I don't know what Galatia is, and I should have looked more up, because we both came up with two different answers for where Galatia is on the map. But uh, but anyway, we talked about the women. <laughs> I feel like that's a Google search. <laughs> yeah. Well, mine said it was, like, old Romania and new Turkey. And um, I came up with a part of Spain. So you're there. But, but um, I think I saw in this that it was supposed to be a fictional. Fictional. Thing. Is an Anton uh, a community of Spain? Huh. Okay. I'll take that. Two, two roses and one. But, but I think that's like a, that. Hmm, hold on. Because there is like a tiny. Well, yes. One of them says Turkey. So. Mm-hmm. Huh. Is Galatian nouns in 
now Turkey. Possibly. Possibly. Well, but in the Europe, is, uh, and it ain't the fucking UK. About, <laughs> it ain't the we, fucking UK. We talked about how the women, women would join the war effort because there because they nothing, needed bitch. They needed yeah, people. They needed people, and there was nothing in the thing because like their non-binary um, pronouns. Mm-hmm. There was nothing that could say they couldn't because it was like either you're you have to be an adult. That's about it. You're either a soldier right. or you're mm-hmm. you're a young you're kind of young kid. kid. Right. So they were like guess what? I'm a soldier now. And they were like, ah, shit. All right, let her in. So, Alex Easton very well could be anything. I never thought about it. And I did think about the binding of the breast, but I guess because my brain oriented soldier to male in the 1890s period. So oh. I was like, yeah, it was best. I just thought up. that they were it's into that up. kind of stuff. So I, I, I didn't think about it. So, But I, I'm glad yeah. that, see, it's nice to have other people yeah, to read with that people. they pick up. Because I feel like I don't pick up some things that other people might be reading and reading. that might just be literal fucking words i'm dyslexic sometimes it's hard mm-hmm. for me like, i'm rereading shit so it's kind of hard um but yeah I, real thick nipples i also <laughs> liked angus um just because yeah. he talked kind of funny and um <laughs> he didn't necessarily sound like this because it's a fucking book he sounded but like, I feel like my audio book <laughs> did, did he sound like that yeah he was definitely squish School. Oh, okay. and well, that wasn't a, that what wasn't, I wasn't doing. This well, that's what he was there. Yeah, um, school. So, um, and yeah. I like that he liked Mrs. Potter. Mm-hmm. And Mrs. Potter like him. Like, like him. oh, so like, at the end of the book, like, I, oh, it's been like only a few minutes since I last saw you, and it's like, oh, y'all were doing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What were y'all doing? It's just like, okay. He's a fun guy. <laughs> I kind of like. I kind of like the humor in this book. It doesn't have necessarily and i'll talk about oh, i'll just bring it up now mm-hmm. there is like slight humor in this book that i feel like is not like it's not very much like pee pee poo poo far it's just like a little kind of something to break the tension right mm-hmm. um and i like that how did y'all feel about the writing overall in this book i feel like it was easy to read and mm-hmm. it definitely when it needed to grab my attention it did yeah um my only thing is like and i've seen this with uh kingfisher's books is it tends to be like midway point is when things start picking up which i whenever i'm reading a book i see what page like shit started to happen it was like page 89 is when Mm -hmm. shit started to happen so how'd you feel about um we'll start with Uh, langley i thought the pacing was really well i feel like atmospherically she took that first half of the book to really set the scene and i think it needed that um and to me i was comparing it to Poe's work and how essentially that's all it was, was let's set the atmosphere, let's think about the house as the windows, the eyes, why is this house just making me so unsettled? Mm -hmm. And then as it picks up, it's like, it it does kind of have an avalanche, but it wasn't so fast-paced and like forced that I felt like we were just rushing through an ending. Mm -hmm. So I I think her pacing really worked. Um, Writing-wise, I do agree. I mean, I think that she... Every character had their own unique voice, which is mm-hmm. nice, yes. and I, I mean, I enjoyed it. I think it was easy to read. I wasn't overwhelmed with characters either. Mm-hmm. I, you know, this character, or this book has, I think, five characters in it. Not to drag this person, <laughs> Cassandra Cobb. It had five characters, and I feel like it was too much, mm-hmm. and I feel, I don't know. I don't know what um, Ursula did. That's yeah. her, her governmental... Um, I don't know what T. Kingfisher did that made he, made that, I don't know, that just easier to follow. Because mm-hmm. I was able to, like, not read the book for, like, a few days and pick up, and I still remembered everyone's name and the character mm-hmm. details of them. Yeah. I like the 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 move of it, because I do get lost, some, not lost, I lose interest sometimes mm-hmm. when, I'm, when it was just too long of expo, or I just feel like, eh, nothing's happening. But I didn't feel that way with mm-hmm. this. I felt like we, like you said, you got through some needed scenery. I was like, okay, that's where we're going. This mm-hmm. is what we're doing. And then, boom, creepy shit. Yeah. That's what I wrote down, too. It was like, do you think it took too long to kind of, like, get to that unsettling point with, like, the hair and the gunshot? So, like, a, he he's... He, there's this weird thing. Tell us about the hairs. So they first get there, and Angus, the character, is kind of a mentor to Easton's character. Mm-hmm. And so it's kind of explaining, you know, hey, I've already got the lay of the land. I went through the town. They told me this area of, like, the House of Ushers, the, uh, you know, the Tarn, whatever, it's not natural mm-hmm. and we don't fuck with them bitches ex- essentially yeah fuck the turtles <laughs> and in the forest fuck the turtles <laughs> and the hairs there they would just not move naturally and so when you're first That's looking unsettling. at it, it it is whenever anything doesn't move as it's supposed to mm-hmm. they talk about that like you just feel that 
unsettling nature. That's why people think of snakes as evil because they move in a different way that typical animals do. Mm. So the hairs. All right, Callie. <laughs> just getting it. Wiggling their head. Um, they they just kind of don't move, and like if you're familiar with hares, rabbits, whatever, they're a jumpy animal. They're yeah. running first sign of danger. Anything. They're and huge these ones, too. Yes, and they just didn't, and they kind of just like, stared at you. Yeah. So. We get to this know. point in the book where. <laughs> yeah. This creepy stare. Yeah, the that's, hair got a BBL. Um, we get to this point in the book where he's like, he needs to get this, he wants to kill this rabbit to see what's up, mm-hmm. and he shoots it in the head, and it like, it looks like he's dead, and he picks it up, and then it like moves, like mm-hmm. it jumps away, and then all the other hairs kind of get together, and they just stare at him, and he, he leaves. That was very unsettling. <laughs> it was. How was that for you? I thought that was really creepy. De- definitely the description of like, him looking at him with like, one eye, and I was like, oh, it's time to go. Um, that freaked me out. Mm-hmm. And I was like, okay, cool. And he was like telling Denton, he's like, I, um, you know, maybe I just, I thought I shot it. Maybe I just didn't shoot it. Right. Well right. To try to comfort himself, so, truly. Yeah. Not right. really. Like, uh, no, you know there was a hole in his head. Right. But. And I was going to say also, because you, you had mentioned, did I feel if it was taking too long to get unsettling? To me, they had described before this that the water wasn't moving properly either. Right. Like when like they're skipping the, like, the stones. Yes. It just like sinks. Yeah, and so that already felt like, okay, what's supposed to be happening here is just not. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I even wrote down at the beginning, like, I, it's not necessarily anything that she's specifically writing and outlining, but you already get that unease just by how Easton's reacting. Mm-hmm. So. And then just not understanding what was wrong with Maddie from first sight or... Or Roderick, and them looking like, like, it's more than just gaunt. It's like, your bones are showing, bro. Like, your skin is so pale that I can see every inch of your bones. Yeah. That was already unsettling. Bitch. Like, I mean, I know what's wrong with them, but I'm like, people Like, you know when like you, that. like, look at an egg or something, like, under a microscope, and mm-hmm. it's just, like, that translucent, you can see yeah. the veins. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, since we kind of mentioned the lake, um... What do y'all feel was symbolic about the lake just in general? Like, why, why have, because the fungus kind of comes from this lake. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm thinking, why, I, when I think of a fungus, I don't typically think of a lake. I don't think of water at all. I think of trees. So mm-hmm. I think, what do we feel about it just being this lake in general? Like, um, for me, I felt like, you know, obviously water symbolizes life. And I think the fact that the, water was acting still in a way and Mm -hmm. the life in the water wasn't normal it was a sim like it was a way of like a new life that's not natural to us so and i and i and i wonder if like maybe that kind of ties into like the pronouns too it's like Mm -hmm. maybe because the and i'm not tying in pronouns to like bad things but like (laughs) The fungus says, like, I, I just, I'm just chilling. Mm-hmm. You know, the fungus is saying to them at the end through Madeline's body, which is weird. It's like, I'm not here to do anything wrong. I'm just here. Mm-hmm. I'm just new and different. And, um, and, I'm, and I wonder if that's kind of like, you know, a pronoun kind of conversation, life, too. Which makes them va because they are childlike because they are brand new. When you just reminded me that they are a new life and brand new, that lends back to why they're considered va. And not adultified. Va I just got here. The <laughs> pronouns are to for children, children. Mm-hmm. and Ka and Khan are for adults. And they're like, "Why is she talking about the the lake or the the the, the fungi mm-hmm. as va?" And mm-hmm. that makes sense now because it's like Cause we're new. So with the lake, did you feel any like? I mean, I think that's beautiful. Actually, I didn't truthfully think of the. Water. I kind of just connected that together. Yeah. So. I think, I mean, I, I like it. Well, what did you... I feel like I, I thought... Oh. To, for me, <laughs> I wasn't thinking of the water specifically. I felt like it was a way to introduce it in a new, like, way. I feel like... It's like instead of having a big tree, yeah. and it's like, let's do something different. Right. Yeah. That That's kind of what I felt. I guess I didn't read into the symbolism mm-hmm. of the lake necessarily, but... That and also, water to me sense. is eerie. Mm-hmm. You know, we, we, we're made up of a lot of water. Mm-hmm. We need water to suffi- survive. We drink it. I mean, it's a talking point in this book. It's like, well, we've been drinking the water. Is that... And I just like the subtle end of, like, one of the... Um, what are they called? The people in the homes that work there. One of the servants is like, girl, we ain't drinking that fucking water. We drinking a well. (laughs) That's like, that's, that's the humor I'm talking about where he like looks and he turns away and he kind of, or like uh, Alex uh, turns away and like kind of cries a little bit. He's like, I'm glad. You're like, thank God. Um, 
So, yeah, I mean, that's just, like, what I thought about the water. Mm -hmm. I do like that it was in water Mm -hmm. because it was different. And then you see kind of, like, the... It looks like phytoplankton at night where it's, like, glowing. Yeah. And it looks like it's pulsating. Mm -hmm. Um, Because even, like, Denton and... Uh, Eastern are kind of like at the like a balcony or mm-hmm. something and they're like looking at it and they're like bitch you see that shit yeah that's just something I kind of like now back to Roderick and Madeline they have a very unique relationship is what I wrote down in quotes <laughs> the both lo- the both look sickly and I wanted to say how long has Rod how, how long has Roderick been sick and I said is he infected because he has like the exact same illness in a way so I I was thinking after we come to the conclusion that Madeline, spoiler alert, again, what has Madeline been this whole time, everybody? A, a fungus. fungus. A fungus. She's been dead yes. for over a yes. month. The letter which that is crazy. got written was not written uh, by Madeline. human Madeline. Yeah, which is really I creepy to even think so about. Mm-hmm. But I'm thinking about, because Roderick was around her a lot, and what looked like white hairs off of her body was mm-hmm. actually fungus, fungus. Which is creepy. Like, just so think of you know, the hairs on my arm, like... They, he just thought, or Alex just thought, Dang, uh, Easton thick. was like, it's yeah, it's just like off. thick hair that's like ripping off and really mm-hmm. it's just like fungal hair. Yeah. Find, them finding that out on the marble, or on the slab later was really kind of. her death trap. I'm oh, like, baby. get out of yeah. that yeah. fucking mausoleum <laughs> right now. Oh my God. I was so yeah. anxious. Um, Wait, I love that part though when he's talking to Mrs. Potter and she's like, yeah, they look like little hairs. And he's like, let's go. Let's go mm-hmm. right now. Mm-hmm. And she's like, what the but where are we going? I mean, she was kind of down, Yeah, she was though. down, but she was she like, was. um, so, um, like, what's this about? He's like, we're going to a mausoleum. She's like, pause. I think you're a smart guy, but what are you talking about? But I thought, but I just love the intensity of that scene, because she was just like, yeah, it can look like hair. And he was like, oh, hell no. Their relationship to go to the brother and sister situation, oh, right. I was going to point out, I feel like if we back up all the way back, when Easton gets there and is joking with Roderick and is mm-hmm. like, oh, yeah, I came here to sweep her off her feet, of course. He's like, what? Yes, he yeah. reacts very negatively. Not like, oh, ha ha, yeah, yeah, not my sister. What but do you like, mean? Gravely, like, no. Mm-hmm. But I thought, especially getting to the end of the book, especially he's cutting, knowing that, I don't know, spoiler, that he cracked her neck. Mm-hmm. I think it's about him. I thought, hey, yes, he's like, I, you, I want to keep my sister with me, but also, you can't take that thing anywhere. That's not even. There's something wrong with her. Well, mm-hmm. I think the thing is, mushroom, bro. I think that Roderick knew the entire time her state. I mean, he even knew that she had drowned mm-hmm. in the water and like was should have been dead. Should have been dead. Yeah. For it, and it was hours. It wasn't just five minutes. Mm-hmm. He said it had been hours, mm-hmm. and I think he knew that something was wrong with her. And wanted to keep her there. That's why he refused on taking her anywhere. Mm -hmm. But in the letter, she's making the same, like, hey, you should probably come get me. Because, like, in the end, all, what is Madeline wanting to do? She wants to... She wants to share the... She wants to share the va (laughs) with um, the mushroom with... Everybody. But with Easton. Because he can leave. Mm-hmm. He's healthier. Oh. He has the body. She, so Her she, body is decomposing. Right. She's like, I only live so long, so you need to... So I'm wondering, is he infected? And mm-hmm. and maybe does he just have more control or he doesn't want to treat it more childlike? But but if he's infected, he well, he would have to have more control. And also he doesn't... His hair looks stupid, but his body isn't shedding the mushroom. I mean, he still looks very sickly, though. That's true. So the way I interpreted it, I, I didn't necessarily get the vibe that he was supposed to be infected. I could see him knowing because, yes, she... Should have been dead. He calls the doctor. Something is not right here. And he does refuse Easton a lot of times. Like, hey, let's let's go take her to Paris. Let's go get another second opinion. Mm -hmm. Let's do this. And every time shuts her down because he knows something is going on. Mm -hmm. To me, I think that I don't think that his illness was related, but I do think that the family, like the Usher line, had something to do with Mm -hmm. this fungal infection because. As you said later, the servant brings up, oh, we've already known. We've known for generations not to mess with this water. Mm-hmm. How so would they have was, known? And if there have yeah. been servants of this household for that long, and there's fungus infecting their books, their library, their, like, Mold. everything is there. So that leads me to believe that he does know and doesn't necessarily want it to continue because he does, spoiler alert, burn down the house and yeah, kill himself like, and his sister fully. We don't okay. see it on camera. Oh, oh, I may have missed. 
Was he in the house? I yes. They yes. He him walked out into the house. house. Mama, yeah. Oh, I thought they dragged him out and mm-hmm. then set the fire. No, for Mama. The- no. He, he went in the house to set the fire. Oh. He said, I'll handle this. So, yeah, Where do you think he <laughs> went at the end? I just thought he was chilling somewhere. I don't know. I think, to me, going back to Pose, the way he had written it was more like both of them just had a Illness. nervousness disorder. Oh. So, like, extreme anxiety, which we see with him he hearing things, seeing things, like... Very being jittery. Very, yes. Um, but, I, I mean, it's. I think it's just supposed to be under that general, like mystery yeah. of this. Mm-hmm. I saw them as like probably growing up together and the only time they ever spent away was when he was in the war and so like they just had this closeness and I feel like probably when she um fungified mm-hmm. he had mm-hmm. a hard time dealing with that and he was like I want to keep because you know you see that in like I can't name one right now but like in other scary movies or uh, supernatural things where people know that this entity is no longer their right. their loved mm-hmm. one but they're like I'm I'm gonna stick beside her. I'm gonna stick beside her. So, um, what did you feel was odd about their relationship? As I didn't then? feel it. I I felt like they were very touchy, touchy, Too close. Well, because if if that's the case, then why? If he might not be infected to her extent, mm-hmm. he has to at least be touching of her or be very close to her a lot. Because the only way that that gets on Easton is by like grabbing her yeah. and it, like rips off. Mm-hmm. So he had had he has to have be physically touching her a lot. Like a hug a day, help her out of bed, help her to the kitchen. He cares an awfully lot about his sisters, but I'm saying. I would care about my Especially this 1890s. Sometimes, okay, what about the They were touching each other's booty holes. No! uh, Remember, so like, what about like the Wright brothers who didn't want their sister to get married because they were just like, I wanted to be this three forever. That's weird. And then she was like, yeah, that's weird, I'm gonna get married. But at the same time, I don't think they had any nefarious thoughts. I think they just wanted to be kids like they had grown up and they wanted to keep doing that and then they did it to me that's weird still i think that from your perspective though he also she obviously did not want to be there any longer she didn't want to be in the house she said that she didn't have any men to look at her she didn't have anything really to do i'm not saying he might not be weird but i'm just i feel like i want to stop it at the point at incest i don't mm. feel like that's what's happening i think he might just be this is a kid. book that i can interpret however yes, i want okay, okay that's fine i'm just saying like the right brothers i don't think it's incest i'm not saying that right brothers want to fuck the shit out of their sister kelly <laughs> I, I i can agree though that is kind of weird yeah it is weird mm-hmm. okay. real quick we're gonna stop talking about this book and we're gonna go to an ad break mm-hmm. an ad break slay queen bye <laughs> Hello, welcome to Stay on the Line. I am Langley, and I'm here with... Kelly Green. And... I almost said my legal name, (laughs) Tara (laughs) Card. And we're talking Uh about What Moves the Dead by T. Kingfisher. Why does that sound so weird? What does the T stand for? Talichula? Oh. Tara? They just want to be me. (laughs) Just like how she stole her whole idea from Edgar Allan Poe. Damn. Call her out. No, Loki, you kind of did that, though, but work. I just feel like you think they're fucking. Yeah. I do. Oh, I didn't. I'm think allowed that. to think that to think their that. their relationship to me is a little weird. Okay, I also think it's weird. Just for the record, for the just record, not, not in fucking. the same way. Kelly yeah. was like, "Well, maybe if I had a brother, <laughs> like, you know, we were lonely in a mansion or whatever." Yeah. Um. So we haven't mentioned Alice the maid, but mm-hmm. Alice the maid has a unique, not too unique, relationship with Madeline. Mm-hmm. Um. Very weird and scary relationship. Um, does anyone want to get into that? I think I got a little confused, to be honest. So. With Alice? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so we do learn that Alice had been infected mm-hmm. and that Madeline had been speaking, teaching the fungus to speak and how to use its senses through Alice. Uh, through Alice. Okay. And to me, I, I had mentioned this to you briefly before but I Alice does end up committing suicide and I reading that and seeing it I don't know if Alice intentionally was infected or if maybe Madeline had already been having interactions with this 
fungus and then somehow infected Alice without Mm. her knowing. I think that's what happened. That's what I got the sense of. And then she decided she had did not want I mean, when someone is, like, literally putting a parasitic fungal in you and they're forcing you to kind of, like, as a puppet to talk, like, I would probably be like, girl, where's the highest bridge? (laughs) Yeah. I just thought it was very unsettling because you you find out that they were close together and they're like, wait, who the fuck is Alice, bitch? Mm -hmm. And then it turns out that Alice was the maid that threw herself off. And then you're thinking, well, why the fuck did she do that? Like, Mm -hmm. what does she see? And then just that whole unraveling thing. I just, I'm still, like, the whole thing about teaching how to speak because it's just air blowing out. And I'm, I I just got confused. But not confused, but also scared. Because, um, like, I don't even know how to explain it. Never mind. But the puppetry part of it is very scary. And I think that's one of the coolest parts. Well, speaking of coolest parts, I wanted to ask y'all what were some of y'all favorite parts in the beak. So I had two. So I oh, wrote down, two? I wrote my Damn. best unsettling, when it was over. Best unsettling, unsettling moment. So we already mentioned one, which was when Alex had shot the hair. Yeah. Um, and I just, I felt actual goosebumps when, before they had had the shot that they were being surrounded and mm-hmm. feeling watched and having that sense of like this so I thought I was the hunter here. I am not. I'm scared. <laughs> yeah, I I literally I even now a little prickle. Ooh. Oh, um, and then for her pleasure. Later, when she's Madeline, the whole scene we see her come back from the grave when she's pulling the hyphae out of her mouth Ugh. to talk. I that yeah was so unsettling, but it was beautiful. It made me it was think perfect. of like a scarecrow yeah. with like straw. Yeah. Like pulling. Like, yes, and you had even done, like, you had done, like, how the, it might speak, and just hearing that in your head while you're reading it, and her, like, having to, like, take something out of yeah. her throat mm-hmm. to be able to speak was just terrifying. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, because it had to connect with the rest of her body, body. again, because it was mm-hmm. only in her head, okay. because her head uh-huh. was in the water when but, she drowned, which is crazy. Yes. Um, yeah, Maddie has a unique, uh, um, unique? Mm-hmm. Uh, has a strange <laughs> way of speaking as the mushroom, because it is the mushroom speaking, it's like, add, eat. Like, and that's just how I, Kelly was like, Maddie. Well, well, only because, so like, no, it's, so when they talked about, like, when she's walking around with Easton, and this technically would have been before her neck broke and it got Mm -hmm. deeper into her body, but when she's walking around and talking to Easton, but not, because he, like, he says there's sometimes where she's Maddie, she's the one Mm -hmm. I know, but then, like, she thinks, he, he thinks she's sleepwalking, and she's like, well, so the way I saw a child, like, no, Maddie, me, one, two, not Maddie. And he was like, what the fuck is this? No, in my mind it was and, like, Maddie. Uh, well, they said childlike. And mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't, I would kick a kid. Well, it can <laughs> also just be like childlike in the speech pattern. Uh, right. Uh, well, in the, in the audio book, <laughs> it was different. That's why we all read. Um, but my creepy Or parts, listen. <laughs> are you making fun of me? Wait, could you listen to a book at like double the speed? Oh, probably, but I would not think. <laughs> that video Trisha paid us, that's like, skip the skip the which when you slow down, it's gibberish. Like, uh-huh. it's not even actual uh-huh. words. But my creepiest parts were. Or just your favorite in general, oh, too. Favorite. Creepy well, is. Still, also I feel like this doubles as a creepiest favorite. It's Maddie and back into the room, but it's the idea of her head just bobbling around. Oh, her broken yeah, neck. Yeah, her broken just... neck. And, like, even, um, Easton's like, I had to look away, because I was like, girl, you need to stop, because she was just like, what do you mean? And then I was like, please stop. Mm-hmm. Your neck's broken? That's gross. Like, he's like, I'm gonna throw up on you. Like, at this point, like, fear is meaning disgust. Yeah. And then also, um, but just, like, uh, all that, and then, then literally barricading the door, and she's like, ah, eh, eh. And they're like, bro, that's not her. And he's like, I just want to leave. Yeah, that is. I, I can mommy. get the like the slamming of you the know? door to yes. get out, and yeah. it's like this is stronger yes. than what Maddie yeah. could they be. They talk about yeah. her skin, like yeah. how it should be blistering yeah. off because they're mm. pounding right? so hard. Because right. as she had described before, these right. are frail people. Frail people. These are like, sickly people. Been frail. Girl, she's also been dead. Wind right? Could, like, fuck them up. Right. Mm-hmm. And but she's like, no, I'm strong. Mm-hmm. I'm very strong. Yeah. And then the other one, my favorite scene is when they're all at the table with Mrs. Potter, even. And, like, they try to uh, dissect mm. the little Well, they, they do. Well, they do. They, they, they do not try. They, they, they try. definitely they do it. They dissect the hair open, that uh, the Angus hair brings back. That Angus brought. They cut the hair open, which I love. And Angus was like, yeah, I killed it. Because at first he's like, I'm not killing no damn hair. 
yeah, we're not about to eat this shit. And they're like, no, it's like to dissect it. He's like, okay, I can do that. And mm-hmm. um, so he does that. And like they dissect it. Like he, they cut his, it, it jumps up. They cut his head off. And he's still like, psych, bitch, I'm still here. And like, that's so creepy. Like that is definitely one of the most them terrifying. them describing each organ, organ being filled with mushrooms, Mushroom. being filled yeah. with the Yeah, like the IV lungs. And the, yes. lungs. the lungs were filled with yeah. the fungi. And then just like, I think they like, at one point, they're all kind of... Sc- it's like a, it's like literally from the movie Alien. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, they're all scattering as yep. this thing is, like, walking while its guts are out on the, right. on the floor. Mm-hmm. And I think uh, Mrs. Potter kind of, like, pokes it with the umbrella to get it to stop. And it's just the stuff. fact of, like, stabbing into this rabbit that's mm-hmm. already open to get it to, to stop, stop moving. Right. Then they decapitate it, and then and she's then like, well, you know, it's only gonna be a few hours before it starts kind of yeah. moving again, so... And doesn't Easton, like, go ham on it at one point? He's like, die, die, die! Yeah. And they're like, bro, it's, it's, this is it. Like, whatever mm-hmm. it is right and now, then they is they burn dead it, as which was it. much needed. Oh, wait, yeah. fires... Fire... Fire. 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 Kills it. Yeah, but those are my favorite scenes. Did you have a different favorite scene? I definitely like the the little surgery thing, the dissection. Mm-hmm. Okay, Madeline being gone from the, the slab. Mm-hmm. Kind oh, of like in the... Yeah. It's not a mausoleum, but we've been calling it that. Yeah. Like a, mo- a mausole- mausole- mausoleum. <laughs> um, so what they do is like, in most traditions, some traditions they do is like, and this is a thing in Japan, um, is like when someone passes away, you kind of have the body in the home mm-hmm. just so that they're kind of like in good spirits there that they'll, they're surrounded by loved ones, mm-hmm. um, for multiple days. And then also there's kind of the thing where it's like, well, but what if they're not dead? Mm-hmm. I mean, I've talked about this on the podcast. There's been instances where people were buried alive yeah. and, mm-hmm. um, they, they go dig them up and they're still alive somehow. Um, and some Hispanic cultures, they put bells on their fingers and you wait. 24 hours to see if the bells ring. Mm-hmm. That's, yeah, that's in a lot of cultures, too. Like, well, I, that's the first culture I heard of. Oh. So. They, they, yeah, they did it in a lot of ones, like in the UK as well. Oh, cool. Yeah, it's that. very common. I was just watching, like, one thing. So, thank you. You were like, it's Hispanic Heritage <laughs> Month, so it means... Oh, yeah, it is. Yay. Um, but, yeah, just the fact of, like, they're setting up to go down here, mm-hmm. Mrs. Potter and Easton... To be like, hey, like, I know, like, I've seen that fungal before, like, can we, because they're talking about, like, hey, is there a fungus that can kind of control people in a Mm -hmm. Mm parasitic way? And, you know, she's like, yeah, I mean, not people, but, like, things, this is what it looks like. So they go down there, and her body is just gone. Mm -hmm. And that's just creepy, because you don't know where it is. And then you see the footprints. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I do love the moment of realization where they're like, if you were Maddie... And your brother broke your neck. Where would you go next? And they're like, ah, ah, ah. And they all run to Roderick's room. Because at first they were like, eh, I don't know what's really happening. But then they were like, oh, shit. Go check on Roderick. I love That's another favorite scene. Sorry. Who had been drugged. Yeah. With and heavy yeah, sleeping <sighs> medication. I mean, he was he was wild. Yeah. Um, I just like the setup of them and the... And like the uneasiness that they're in this dark room. And they don't... They're not... They haven't told anyone else in the house mm-hmm. about this. So then... That just creates a tension of where the fuck is this bitch's body? Mm-hmm. Because Roderick, the day before, is like, I heard her banging on the door to like come out, mm-hmm. which is also oh, unsettling. That's so Another unsettling thing, kind of like towards the end, is like when Madeline says to Easton, like, I've been dead for over a month. Mm-hmm. That's unsettling. A dead person wrote me a letter controlled yep. by mm-hmm. fungus. <laughs> so, what were our least favorite parts of the book? I, okay. The, I feel like this may not go over with y'all but my least favorite is the ending i oh. specifically did not like that they killed it it's entirely dead no i mean it could have been left with some element of dread of is oh. it gonna get out is there gonna be another iteration but the way she ends it is like you said they set the house they on put fire. like sulfur in the sulfur. water and then sulfur. it's like mm-hmm. there was no like, more glowing in the end it was very and that right. to me if we're going to talk about anything rushed, that mm-hmm. felt very rushed. Yeah, but I felt like it was necessary rush. But, so you're like my boyfriend. You want there to be like, da da da. Are they so Not necessarily, order. but like, so, it just seems too good of a happy ending. Yes, mm-hmm. it seemed like we, Dos Ex Machina, however you would say that, uh, we ended it. It worked out perfect. I guess it seemed reasonable to me. It seemed like something we knew we could do, but we never bothered with it. Cause yeah, it's but like, like the ugly lake, who cares? If you think about it, it's like oh, we just we just happen to find like thousands of pounds of sulfur to put uh, in, right. like so fast. Like if the if the book had ended like, and then all we saw in the distance was the flames coming mm-hmm. through the okay. top of the house. So I would could. I would have appreciated it ending there. Okay, that so. that would have been better to me personally, and okay. that's really truly the only low part that's I had. Fair. That's fair. 
we could okay so there could have been like a sequel or like now how do we well, get rid of it's just letting sequel, your mind so think like, about what whoa, could happen see, this like one that. was just like <laughs> <laughs> that bothers me in scary things I need to know how we end it otherwise I'm it just felt like for me it felt like because the last chapter was very short it was just very much like Oh, oh, we're not uh, poisoned by the water because we don't drink that water. And then we found this sulfur. And yet they did think that Mrs. Potter was crazy, but we figured out a way. Mm -hmm. And then we went back and then we put the sulfur in the lake and the end. Mm -hmm. They could have changed that part to an afterward. And I feel like that gives you more of that grace where you're like, oh, and then 10 years later we put the sulfur in the lake. Well, I think that would have been worse. Like, I I think I... Yeah, I don't want to, like, flash forward to 10 years later, because at that point, then what the hell was happening in 10 years? Mm -hmm. Like, I think it would have been better just, like, kind of, like, leave, and then the the flames did the work. And then I'll always think those mushrooms are going to kill me. But, yeah, I still think that, so there's that. My least favorite part was... I actually didn't have a least favorite part, but I will say, like, a thing that got me is because it's, like... 1890s and European and I just don't um, know much about that but I always it tickled me but like in a hey way where they were like well Americans will shake hands with a a with a table and like I'm totally off her screw America if they're like Okay, it's the FBI watching, but um, girl, what you are know, you getting on about? I, okay, because I'm like, dang, I'm like, what the hell is because she talking I'm like, about? Why are they being so rude about Americans shaking hands with anybody? Like, who cares what your rank is? What's up, bro? Like, that's how I was feeling. But I was like, oh, I'm sorry, we are poison pump. I and feel pop like that is how these most days. people. Like when my mom went to London. Everybody knew she was American because she's loud. She is introducing herself to everybody. She's I friendly, want you to do that. overly so, well, and that's how. So that made me sad because I was like, "Why aren't y'all nice to each other?" It made me think about one of my friends said, "Yeah." So we went to a drive-through, and like the person was like, "Have a good day," and he was like, "In Germany, we don't they don't do all that." And I was like, "That's kind of sad." And he was like, "No, it's not. Just get your food." I was like, "Dang, man!" So that's how I felt listening to the. Well, Kelly, like, you're very hands with people. and and Americans are like this too. I'm hitting the table. Very sensitive. <laughs> so <laughs> I just like when people are friendly with each other that's all but so that's the only thing that kept striking me because every it was just like a little thing every few pages like oh he's American and he said how's your day like you don't know me and I'm like bruh how's your day but well obviously for some people it is like a little disrespectful to be asking personal questions like that to, to you that might not seem personal but that is to other people. Mm-hmm. Like, there's a sense of, like, I don't know who you are, so. I guess I'm very American, and I think yes. that's sad. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You're very American. I know. Do y'all have any things that y'all wanted to add? I know you have notes, and you took notes, yeah. to my knowledge. Did y'all want to say mm-hmm. anything? I just love the idea of a thing that's new to me it may not be new to other people but i'm used to my style of scary is there is a human or a monstrosity as the bad guy but this mushroom being the bad guy all of that's that's weird and cool Mm. that's why i i I wanted to say like how do we feel about a parasitical mushroom very last of us like the concept of a mushroom or a fungi that is parasitic do you mean the game you won't i thought you didn't yeah did you watch the series? Watch? I know about... The Last of Us has been around for like 10 years. Okay, okay. I know about, about the clickers. Later, right? They um, scare me. <laughs> yes, they do. Uh, I, I love it. I love Last of Us so much. I think fungi and mushrooms in general are just so interesting and we're still learning so much about them that this book and taking, I don't know, body horror to the max in some parts. Doesn't The Last of Us TV show have, like, the hairs, too? The mm-hmm. white-looking hairs? They, like, come out of someone's mouth at one point. I feel like there was something growing out. There's definitely fungal growth on a lot of them. I know, but I feel like I've seen, like, it comes out of their mouth, specifically. It was like a... I haven't have seen the whole show. I just remember seeing a clip like that. I'd have Anyways, to back, continue. Yes. Fungal things concept <laughs> i i mean i liked the mushrooms as a concept i think it's a interesting Come set, take no. <laughs> of horror and just it being like this other entity that we really don't know that much about mm. 
coming over. It to me, I was thinking of like the thing, the movie, the thing, mm-hmm. and thinking of it taking over and possessing and kind of learning and breaking out of its mm-hmm. area and contagion. I was thinking of Invasion of the Body Snatchers in a way because that's very similar. Mm-hmm. I like something that's a little different, and you know that's probably why I like Annihilation and maybe why I didn't necessarily like. Uh, nothing but black. Oh, and thing is back it's around. It was um, different. I just I don't know. I never heard a common bone and spit bringing back a dude to life. So Kelly's talking about nothing but black and tea. She's not talking about what moves the dead. No. Um, you don't know. Read it. Spoiler alert for another <laughs> book, Kelly. Wow, how inappropriate. They don't know anything. Wow, did you just ins- insult our they don't know our anything viewer? About the book. That's not a real spoiler. I think it's interesting that Roderick knew to break the neck. Mm-hmm. That, I'm like, how did he know? Well, no, that was bad, though. That's how it moved through her body. I think he just wanted that shit to die, and he thought that would help, but it made it worse. I don't think it necessarily made it worse. It just didn't kill her. That's mm-hmm. the way I... Co- I co- think he, I think stuck, he, right, above the neck. But now it's like, let me get all up in them guts, girl. And but he didn't know that. I think to him, exactly. I think he... he, he I think what he thought was if I break the nervous system, mm-hmm. that this thing can now no longer be using my sister. Right, but mm-hmm. he was wrong. I guess is what I'm saying. Okay. Because how you came about it made it seem like he always knew that that was going to happen. No, I was saying the opposite. I thought okay, I thought you were saying it's cool how he knew how to break the neck, and I'm saying no, I'm I'm, I'm wondering neck was why, a bad idea. like why did why he, he chose. why oh, he chose I to do that? Shit to die, I would have broke the neck, but okay. but like how did he like he. How did he know it was in the head? Is what mm-hmm. I'm saying. Like oh. that's why I think he's infected okay. to an extent of like. Okay. That's interesting to me. Like he I, knew that the this parasitic thing was in her head. I, he could have he could have just stabbed her in the heart, slit her throat, yeah. did all this stuff, give her medicine to kill yeah. her. I didn't. Maybe he it, was already doing that, and that's why she was like, nothing. and that's why her body was deteriorating oh. so much. Is because you know like. <laughs> Well, like, you know, maybe giving her things, like, yeah. that's why she's not eating well, oh, or things like he's that. Like, I've tried to kill her every night. Um, maybe not to that extent, but... Okay, I, so what I, the way I saw it was that he just tried something, and I guess in my brain, headshot, broken neck, something to try. strangling, you know... Breaking someone's neck. Because they make it seem like it's so easy on TV. They go, the yeah. way they described her neck was not just a yeah. little. Yeah, it looked it like she like a, fell well, down yeah. the stairs well, and I landed on how. her neck at a 90 degree angle. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, I didn't know what happens to your Kelly, penis. how strong do you think normal people are? I don't know. I really don't know. I'm Kelly. <laughs> Langley, thoughts? How strong people are? No, just maybe... I don't any know. Do you have any thoughts? Yeah, any final thoughts about this book? Um, I feel like the one thing that we didn't necessarily close out on, why did she choose to be infected? Why oh, would yeah. she go in willingly? Like, was she just she was well, bored? Was she just she lonely? Literally, well, she, she, so she had drowned it in, and mm-hmm. it went in her, and she was like, you know what? There's been no man that came here to give the, the attention that I wanted. I deserved something. And this is the only thing that's given me the attention that I deserve. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I saw that perspective. Now, was she valid in her things? No. It's giving crazy. <laughs> yeah. So that's how I felt. One can go it. crazy when faced with loneliness for an extended period of time. Mm-hmm. I thought her loving brother was there. Yeah, but she's known him forever. <laughs> That's boring now. Mm. Yeah. She wanted the dick. Oh. She literally said that. Well, maybe she got it, and that's why he's infected. Ew. Ew. <laughs> Incest! <laughs> um, Kelly, what did you want to add to that? Her motive. Nothing. I mean, her motive for... Oh, no, I think she was lonely. I really think she was like, I'm bored. There's nothing else to do. And, I mean, maybe she didn't mean to, like, drown. But once she did, she was like, I'm going to play with this stuff because it likes me. And I'm mother. And people do have a yearn to be needed. And Kelly, even if she was... Is ha- the call coming from inside the house? <laughs> no. But even if she has fun hanging out with her brother, literally, like, we've been doing this since we were kids. I don't care. Mm-hmm. But this is new. This needs me. And I'm teaching it. And I'm going to grow Well, remember it. back to the thing about the lake and new things. And the yeah. fungal thing. This is a new life for us. This yeah. is something new for her. The change that she's Something she exciting. Made. Her brother got to go off to war and see other countries. She's just been sitting here being here. So you think going to war is great? New and no, exciting. however. Yeah, very American of you, Kelly. Very American. However, back in the day before World War II, which this 
is people used to treat war a little differently. They did used to. Be, I mean, it's still. I mean, awful. Like didn't damn, really Kelly like, loves war. They talk about war flashbacks in this book. I know. I'm and just how there's not like say and how Genesis. there's tra- yeah okay, trauma. Okay, listen. Yes, they do talk about the trauma, but people still have like this different idea in the older days about war and about how it made you valiant. And yeah, he's got PTSD and he's really fucked up. But still, she might be thinking from a civilian's point of view. He got to see other countries. I didn't get to do anything. I'm gonna feed this organism. Mm-hmm. You know, because civilians don't understand war, and they only started understanding it a little bit more after World War Two, World War One, because they would still be like, "Oh, off to fight a brave war, young man. Oh, it's gonna be so interesting. Why is everybody dead?" Like they literally were like that. And you're like, "Cause war sucks, bro." Any other questions? Mm-hmm. Kelly, do you have any questions? If I know you took notes. If you're in this book, would you survive? No. Um. <laughs> you just set I, yourself I on fire. I feel like I would have wanted huh? to leave the house when I got there. So you wouldn't have survived. I mean, I, I guess if house. I left the house, I would. <laughs> I think I would have survived. I think you have good chances. Would you survive with your mental stability intact once that rabbit popped its ass back up? That's what I'm saying. I would not have wanted well, to stay at all. Yeah, I would I have wanted have, to leave. I wouldn't have discovered the rabbit. Mm-mm. The oh. fact that the servants didn't even see that shit is wild. Yeah. Um. Okay. So that's how... I felt about it. Um, who question. would you recommend this book for? We probably should have said that before we spoiled the whole mo- uh, uh, book. The it's whole okay, movie. still read it. It's about the journey. Not no, the who, who, who would you recommend it for, though? My mom. No. Um. <laughs> this one goes out, too. This I one goes out to my mom. I would recommend this book to people who are, again, Slaying. Oh, you said slaying. I was like, slaves. What the fuck? Wow, uh, Kelly. Very American. I would recommend... <laughs> Okay. You're worse than my students. <laughs> anyway. Um, okay, I would recommend... So I'm terrible. Okay, well, no. That's me. Yeah, terrible. Oh, terrible. <laughs> okay. Uh, very cool. Please don't hit me. They sprayed me before. Anyway. Oh, I should get um, that back in here. No. With what? I would recommend Water. this oh. book to people who like things that are a little off the beaten path. Because, again, I'm like... What's the, who's the villain this time? Beats? I thought we were talking about mushrooms. <laughs> Jesus. I was like, who's the villain this time? Is it the maid? No, it's the mushroom. I think, so I think people who like a little cookie. I think they'll like a little it. cookie. 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 I kind of want a cookie now. Yeah, I could go for some cookies. Are we, good, I, are we doing that after this? Mm, we can get some well. cookies right well. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I feel like if you're wanting a short read, something easy, I do think I you think have to be... I think it's a decent short read. Yeah, it definitely is. It's a quick one. I think you do have to be a little okay with some body horror, because that's gonna be a thing. It will pop up in the last, like, 70 mm-hmm. pages. But you made it so far. Might as well keep going. <laughs> I mean, so true. But I feel like if you can... if Stomach. Yeah, if you can stomach that, then I, honestly, I would say anybody. I think it could break genre ban- barriers I like it because to me it's like it's like horror but mm-hmm. sci-fi in a way I feel like people wouldn't think of an 1890s book yeah as sci-fi you but to me like I feel like period. it has some sci- sci-fi kinetic mm. energy to it mm. this kinetic energy um I don't know it's just very interesting and I really liked it now I will say I feel like this cover kind of spoils the fucking book yeah I feel like the cover spoils the book um which you know you need a cool book cover. I feel like the synopsis spoils too much of the book. If you didn't mm-hmm. know necessarily, like, let me read what the the book says. It says when Alex Eason, a retired soldier, receives word that their childhood friend Madeline Usher is dying, they race to the ancestral home of the Ushers in the remote countryside of that word. Um, what they find there is a nightmare of fungal gross and possessed wildlife. Like that yeah. to me is spoiling. But see, that's, I need that much of, first of all, you know, I don't care about spoilers, but I need that much of a spoiler to get into the book, because if you just say he popped up in some weird well, shit. Well, okay, but like, then they could that. just say Madeline sleepwalks and Mm-mm. speaks in strange voices at night, mm-hmm. and her brother Roderick is consumed by a mysterious Madeline of nerves. I feel like should have been there, and not the, I guess not so. the fungal gross fungal. possessed mm-hmm. wildlife surrounding the dog pulsing lake. Like, I feel like I needed... I personally, I need a little. I need a little spoil to get me into it. Otherwise, I'm like, ah. Aided by the uh, British mycologist, is that the word? How you pronounce mycologist, it? Mycologist, yeah. uh, American doctor Alex must unravel the secret of the house of the usher before it consumes them all. Like, like I feel like, why are they infected? infected? What's infected? But what are the I animals think that doing? That, that kind of ruins. So it tells of you it. so much because when they're like the rabbits are acting strange, I'm like, yeah, there's fungal in it. Mm-hmm. I didn't mm-hmm. think that. 
I was just like, what's wrong with the rabbits? Really? You really did? Kelly, are you serious? I'm slow. So I need Okay, a... why are you... You're raising your voice. <laughs> okay. Because I feel very attacked. No. Because I didn't I didn't think about the... F- I forgot about the fungus for a second, okay? I know that we were poking at mushrooms. <laughs> Leave me alone. I know we were poking say at nothing. mushrooms. But I don't know. I was like, what's wrong with the rabbits? I, I'm fine. I just need enough information to go, that sounds kind of cool. I feel like, and I told you this before, that I I do think I agree with you on that. Mm -hmm. Despite that, it still is enough that I read it and enjoyed the whole book. Yeah, I agree. But I do wish that there was that surprise. Because I'm knowing the whole time, okay, she's acting weird. She probably has fungal in her or something. So how is that going to unravel? For me, it was just like... Okay, how is this going to unravel for everything? And I guess that's how I always like to enter things. I don't like being blind. I like, okay, so when are we going to get to the part where we know that you've got... I don't like that. that I I want to be a little bit blindsided Mm -hmm. because then that makes my reading experience even better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel you. I wish I could read like that. I will stop reading if I don't feel like I'm getting to the core soon enough because I don't know what's happening. But, I mean, the core is still there. Yeah. It's just you're not told on the front of the book Uh, what that story is entirely about. Yeah, I was good. You're you're basically told what the enemy is in this is. book. It took mm-hmm. me it, it tells today. you it tells you right here, Kelly. Fungal growths are possessed wild and possess wildlife. Yeah, I forgot. That is telling you the enemy, the it villain of the book, today right there. Know that that was a rabbit. What? What did you think that was? It was creepy. Huh? There's literally another rabbit right here. I don't know what that is. It's just pink. I thought that was a mushroom. I was. It is a mushroom, head. but there's another rabbit right here. I didn't know. Growing out of it. I didn't know what it was. Kelly, we well, gotta do some like puzzles or something to work on some critical thinking skills. I have processing disorder. Okay. You're whispering again. I didn't need them to hear that. It's fine. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, that was the book. Yay! Yay! I'm excited. Are you guys excited for the next one? Oh, yes. yes. Do we want to do a deadline for it? I mean, this this is also a short story. There's only I'm it's literally about the same amount of pages. 130. No, I've got to actually read this one. Oh, there's pussy in this. Sometimes when a book that takes place... Now, I will say, Mm -hmm. this was easy to read. Sometimes when a book that takes place in, like, the 20th century, 19th century... Well, not 20th century. 19th century, 18th century, and below that. It's kind of hard to follow Mm because they fucking sound goddamn weird and the verbiage is weird. So I'm wondering how this lesbian Uh vampire is going to go. It says it's only 73 pages. Is there a forward? And a... You I have mean, pictures. I but think. if you oh. look at this book, like, there's so much space. Okay. So it probably could have been. But there is some pages in here. Yeah. I probably don't have the photos that you guys get. You don't get the pretty pictures. Um, but yeah, we can read this next. Mm-hmm. Um, we can discuss when we want to finish it. But I can start on it. And where can we find y'all if anyone wants to keep up with you? You can find me at Kelly Green Ivy on Twitter, TikTok, and Instagram. Twitter? Oh. I'm not calling it that. So Twitter, if you, you know. Dead you name know. her. Mm. You know what? He oh, dead names his own trans kids. So wait, he can, really? Yes. Know, he's very transphobic. Mm-hmm. I don't know. And he did. De- he literally bought Twitter just because he was like, it made my kid trans, and I feel like I need to ruin that thing. Then that's yeah, literally gross. was his motive. Wait, forty forty. Like transphobic people are fucking insane. Like you just JK spent forty. Nut. You just spent forty four billion dollars because you hate your trans kid. I hate that. So I will not call it whatever he calls it with that stupid I'm not really on, I don't really I'm not really on there that much. I'm on so. there. That's where my writing community is. Um, Hi guys. you can't find me. Yeah. She's elusive. I don't know. Here sometimes, I suppose. Kelly's podcast, podcast. sometimes. Pick it apart. Not her forgetting the own name. When was, when was the last episode? I'm starting <laughs> in October. Why don't you start Season three. N- now? Season three? Yeah, season three. Bitch, you want to be me so bad. Are you on season... You're Girl, season I got a hundred episodes. I'm, I'm oh. on season three. Well, I don't have a hundred episodes. I'm just on season three. Mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's more of a vibe thing. How? Not a... Never mind. <laughs> I didn't even know you were on a season two. Because I stopped in the middle. I can't... It can't be the same season. Like, with a break. And last I'm year. Tara Carr, that's T-E-R-R-A-H-C-A-R-D. You can find me under most platforms under that name. You can find this podcast, Stay on the Line, on most of your streaming services that are podcast-related. That made it seem like I'd be on Netflix. Um, no, 
Fuck Netflix Peacock. and fuck Disney um, for not paying their people. Yeah. You are literally billionaires and you can afford it. What I would love is if you rate and review this podcast on either Spotify or iTunes. We have 20 reviews on Spotify and they're all five star ones, okay. which you don't have to give us a five star, but that would be nice. And then we're on iTunes as well, too. I wonder if there's any um, newer ones on iTunes. Um, we're also on Patreon, which I want to pull up the Patreon list. So if you want to really support the podcast, you can on Patreon. That's patreon.com forward slash stay on the line. So we have three different tiers. There's the oh, phone that's on the floor. Mm. Um, we're at three different tiers. There is the ghosted tier, which is the $1 tier. You just like get early audio of the podcast and then, um, yeah. And then there's the second tier, which is the Miss Caller tier. So you get like some added things and videos with mm-hmm. that tier. And then there's the highest tier, which is the pee pee poo poo tier at $7. Mm-hmm. So you get your name right out on the podcast and other benefits too. So we have Chris B at the pee pee poo poo tier, Crystal L, Miss Titty City, uh, Phonix, Caitlin B, uh, Kiki, Pobre. Uh, sunny Days, oh, Zing Cat, Coronation, Winnie, and Rebecca Carlson. So if you want to want to join the podcast nation, you can at <laughs> patreon.com for such thing on the line. Yeah, is there anything that y'all want to add? Um, Kelly Green Ivy is spelled K-E-L-L-I <laughs> Green Ivy. Okay, so we have not had a review, uh, a written review in a hot minute on iTunes. So go ahead and do that. Um. But yeah, it's 4.9 out of 5 stars on there with 16 reviews. The fact that I have 100 episodes is wild. Is. Um, Congratulations. You just, thank you. What are you doing for your 100th? I, I've already done that. Oh, what? Okay. Fake fan. I'll listen. Oh. Literally a fake fan. We're already past 100 with this recording. I'm not... I said I have 100 episodes. Yeah. Not I have about almost 100 episodes. Oh, I thought this was 100. I don't know. Well, then you knew the answer. We're well, no. This. Surely they would... Film some pre pre mm, like mm, mm-hmm. you know. Who are y'all again? I'm Kelly Green. Speak up. I'm Kelly Green and I'm Langley and I'm Terry Carter. Make sure you stay on the line. No, oh. stay on the line. No, stay <laughs> on the line. Oh wait, we can all say the line part. Make oh, sure, okay. make Hold sure, on. make sure you stay on. The Live!